In the previous lesson, you learned how to insert a conflict and how to surround text with scan stop begin and scan stop end format symbols. While these placeholders are helpful in some situations, in most places the most efficient placeholder will be a field, because once you fill in a field, the information will be stored and can be reused rather than retyped. In the edit lessons, you learned how to fill in user defined fields and field list group fields. In this lesson, you'll learn how to create user-defined fields and insert them into your include files. We'll begin by opening up the title page include file that we created earlier. I'll double click the include files case and then double click the file named title. The first two lines of text on my title page are centered. Just as there are question and answer paragraph styles for questions and answers, colloquy paragraph style for colloquy, parenthetical paragraph styles for parentheticals, there is a centered paragraph style for the text that needs to be centered. The shortcut key for inserting the centered paragraph style is F4, F. I'll go ahead and press F4, and then F. You may be wondering why the shortcut key is F and not C. Well, F4C is already assigned to colloquy, and colloquy is used a lot more frequently than centering. If you don't like that shortcut, you can always change the keyboard key assignments by clicking Tools, keyboard customization, and then format symbol options. We won't take the time to do that right now though. Okay, most of this text always remains the same every time I use this title page, so I'll go ahead and just type that text. Superior Court of the State of and then a space. Okay, I'm stopping here because I'm certified as a reporter in more than one state and it depends on which job I'm doing as to which state should appear in this spot on the title page. So I need a placeholder. I don't want to have to pick a conflict every time the state is mentioned, and I don't want to have to replace or edifying the correct state name in every job, so the most efficient placeholder would be a user-defined field. To insert a field, I'll click Edit, Insert, Field. The Insert Field dialog box appears. Now, as you learned in Edit, there are three kinds of fields. Fieldless group fields, which you see here at the top of the dialog, are used for appearances. We'll cover those in the next lesson. Predefined fields that automatically fill in dates and times and page numbers are listed at the bottom. User-defined fields are shown in the list after you create them. Each user creates his or her own unique user-defined fields. To create a new user-defined field, I'll click New Field. A new field with the generic name Field1 appears. I'll give it a new name, which accurately reflects the information I'll need to type or select to fill in this field, State, and then I'll press Enter. Now, to insert this new State field into my include file, I'll click Insert. That's all there is to it. The Insert Field dialog box remains open. I can either close it and then reopen it when I need it again, or just move the dialog box out of my way while I type in more information into my include file. I know I'm going to need to insert more fields soon, so I'll just move it out of the way for now by clicking and dragging the title bar of the dialog box. Okay, the first line is typed. I'm going to press Enter, which moves my cursor to the second line in the centered paragraph style, and type the text that doesn't change from job to job. County of. And now, as the county can change, I'll insert a new user-defined field to be the placeholder for the county name. Now, as I didn't close the Insert dialog box, all I have to do is click that dialog box to switch the focus and make the cursor active in that dialog box. Now, I'll click New Field, name it County, and press Enter. And then click Insert. That's all there is to creating a new field and inserting it into an include file. And of course, if I want to insert a field that I've previously created, all I'll have to do is click the name of that field in the field list, and then click Insert. Before you go and practice inserting user-defined fields or move on to the next lesson, there's one tip I'd like to pass along having to do with capitalization. In the edit lesson about filling in user-defined fields, you learned that if a field may sometimes be filled in with all kept text, and sometimes with initial kept text, you should always type the value for the field with initial caps and surround the field with all caps on and all caps off format symbols whenever the text needed to appear in all caps. 
So, let's walk through how to insert the all caps on and all caps off format symbols before and after a field in an include. First, I'll position the cursor at the beginning of the field by clicking it. Next, I'll press F4 and then Shift plus V. That's V is in Victor. Then, I'll position the cursor at the end of the field and I'll press F4 and lowercase v. You can see in the reveal codes pane that the commands to turn on and off all caps appears around the field. There's one other way to surround a field with all caps on format symbols. You can mark the field and then press F4, Shift plus V. As you can see in the reveal codes pane, marking first and then pressing F4 and the shortcut key for all caps on inserted both all caps on and all caps off format symbols around the marked field. This would be a good time to practice inserting user-defined fields. Go into the training user and follow the directions for exercise 3 in the include files practice document. Then proceed with the next lesson in order.